want to thank first Ali for this invitation uh, to this Gulan Institute, also the invitation to come here, share some thoughts with you, and finally to all of you present here, which gives us the opportunity to speak about different issues that have to do with the world we're building together on this 21st century. No doubt, no doubt that spirituality, that human relations, that the way we can work together is really going to give us the opportunity to reach that world we're all after. I have a great admiration for Mr. Gunan because I share fully with him his thoughts as well as share, I share those thoughts with, for instance, San Ignacio de Loyola, which has been my mentor, which is this man that has repeated once and again that the only way we can reach happiness is by being for others. The only way we're going to meet our dreams and have a fruitful, happy life is precisely making sure that we commit with our neighbor, that we work and live for others. And this has been the guidance of my life. And this is something that this world badly needs. We need more love. We need to share more common values. And we need new institutions, world institutions, because the ones we have today are not complying with the charter, the vision, and the reason they were created for. I'm referring to United Nations, for instance. United Nations was created by different nations, among them, of course, United States, Europe, and Mexico. Mexico is also a founding nation <coughs> of the United Nations. And that institution was created to bring harmony, to bring peace, in the world, to meet conflict among nations, to build bridges, and to work for those values that the whole world has as an aspiration. Very unfortunately, today, that institution needs a total renewal, needs a total reinventing, to make sure that we can have that kind of world that we all have aspirations for. And that's one of the big chapters that we have today, to reinvent that institution so that we avoid the direct unilateral interventions, trying to correct things elsewhere in the world. It's pretty unfortunate and this nation has paid a price for that. Has paid the price of rejection and losing the respect from many parts of the world because of those interventions. When those should be done multilaterally and should be done by that institution. I really think that if we all work together we will have that kind of United Nations, that kind of World Bank, that kind of International Monetary Fund, and that kind of UNESCO, the United Nations for Education, that the world deserves. Number two, the world is building bridges in trying to understand each other. And in that respect, I can say, for instance, 
the G7 now converted into G20 is a new effort <coughs> to really bring in the leadership and the conduction that at least the economic part of development that at the very end has to do with poverty, <coughs> has to do with building the human capital, the capacity to generate the wealth that we need for that, can come from that group. But further and beyond what we have is big changes going around in the world. Big changes, like the one mentioned recently, this power and financial shift from the West to the East. And that will certainly carry on also a cultural and maybe leadership shift. And we all know about the profoundness of different spiritual leaders and different movements, spiritual or religious, that have been dominant in the East, as well as now the ones on the West. And this idea of the inter-dialogue, I think is a great, moving, inspiring idea. Because at the very end, on the different names of religions, or values, or spirituality issues, we have many, many things in common. We just have to read Mahoma, we just have to read or hear about the Orthodox Church and the Pantheon that we just visited in Istanbul, Martin and myself, and you just have to read about Julian Institute and Mr. Julian, and we immediately will find out that we have common values, common spiritual values that are the force, the strength, the power that is going to be building the world in this 21st century. But at the very end is leadership. It's leadership either of nations or world institutions or communities, or people, and persons. And fortunately, God created all of us with that power within, with those capacities to exercise leadership. The humble, the poor, the rich, the educated, the non-educated, all of us here, you, yourselves, we're all leaders. We are all created leaders, and we are leaders all the time of our lives, and we are leaders in any activity that we decide to participate. What is very unfortunate is that many of us do not do the exercise that Julian did, like Mahama Gandhi did, like Nelson Mandela did, or Martin Luther King, <coughs> to walk within ourselves to learn who we are, to discover our capacities and our leadership, to define the purpose, the purpose of our life, and the purpose of our actions. Purpose is a very symbolic, strong, clear word that applies most to any human activity. And with purpose, then you have a life plan. When you have a lifeline and you have purpose, you perform, you become a leader. You have the capacity to change things. You have the capacity to accomplish heroic, sublime ideas and dreams. And that's the power we all have within ourselves. And fortunately, we never end up making ourselves Leader. And more fortunately, as Deepra Chopai says, if we get ourselves five minutes in silence every day, we'll have the opportunity to start again. We have the opportunity to correct. We have the opportunity to increase our challenge. We have the opportunity to do much more 
then what are we doing? 